RC with Adam is brought to you in part by these super awesome people. Everybody, welcome back to rcwithadam.com. My name is Adam, and today we're taking a look at some really cool 3D printer filament from 3D Fuel. And this stuff is called Olfen Block Copolymer, or OBC. The idea behind it is that it is kind of like nylon. It has similar uh, characteristics to nylon, but it is easier to print. And th those characteristics are that it is very flexible. It's not quite as squishy as TPU, but it's way more flexible and durable than uh, PLA. Uh, it's supposed to have very good chemical resistance. I have not actually tested that out yet. And what I'm most interested in is that it is actually lighter than PLA. It's about 20% lighter than PLA. And that is very exciting because I plan on using it for this guy right here, which we're gonna talk about in just one second. But first, I wanna give a big shout out to John at 3D Fuel and Fargo3dprinting.com for hooking me up with this uh, filament and some accessories that go into printing it. They were very generous about that, so definitely go check them out for any of your 3D printing needs. Personally, I've been using 3D Fuel filament for a while now and I, I really like it. Like it's, it's really good stuff. So I can personally vouch for that. Uh, so links in the description and all that sort of stuff. But let's jump into it, what I printed and more about printing it right now. According to 3dfuel.com, this is a polythene or PE based Olfen block copolymer and it is made from a unique polyethylene based material. They say that it has excellent printability, low density, higher durability, excellent Z axis property retention, chemical resistance, consistent printing, and low odor, just like me. They say, these material benefits enable new high-end applications, OBC's low flexular modulus and extreme fatigue resistance, extreme fatigue resistance, make living hinges easier and longer lasting than ever. The low density durability and chemical resistance are excellent for UAV, automotive, marine, and RC applications. Well, that sounds right up my alley, doesn't it? It sure does. I have not tested all of these properties like the chemical resistance and some other things, but I have printed quite a few things for us to look at today. So let's just jump right in. Let's jump right into the big one, the main thing, which is this guy right here. This is the body or the, uh, you could call it the nose section of the Mini Hawk 5. VTOL uh, RC uh, quadcopter slash airplane deal that is designed by Steve Carlson. He's given me the files to do some uh, pre-release testing, which I'm very thankful for. Now, the two main reasons why I was so interested in OBC for the Mini Hawk 5 is because uh, this is a great way to reduce weight because it weighs about 20% less. And actually, if I compare this, uh, this Mini Hawk 5 body to the body that I printed in uh, PLA. It was actually a 3D Fuel uh, Pro PLA Iron Red, I believe it is. There's about a 20 gram difference in weight, which is quite a bit. And especially if you printed you know, the wings as well, you would have an even larger difference in the weight, which is good because you can fly, you have a higher thrust to weight ratio or you can fly longer or carry a greater payload, all that good stuff. The other really cool thing about this is that it's very durable. And so that is really what I was very interested in for the Mini Hawk or any type of 3D printed airplane or even quadcopter frame, that sort of thing. Like something that might get you know, crashed into the ground because this is very, very, very durable compared to PLA because PLA, it might crack um, and especially along the layer lines. So in, in particular with this uh, Mini Hawk 5 nose, it's printed, you know, vertically. So you have these layer lines and it seems to me like the most likely area that's going to crack is going to be right along this nose section. Uh, like if you, you know, if you crash in a downward angle into the ground, this is probably going to be taking most of the impact. And so it's most likely to split along those layer lines. Now, actually the 
the PLA version that I printed, it is already cracking uh, prematurely because it turns out that there was actually too much uh, moisture in the filament because I left it out uh, for too long. So uh, that's, that's just kind of a moisture issue with that one. But that type of cracking is probably what would happen with even a good PLA print when you crash it into the ground. And I do say when, not if. So as you can see with the, with the OBC version, it is very, very durable. It does uh, maintain its rigidity. It's, it's obviously not as rigid as PLA, but it is more squishable and it's not as squishable as TPU, which is good because TPU, it would just kind of be like this floppy, you know, mess, but it does need to be, it does need to maintain its shape. One concern that I do have about OBC for this application is the potential for it to warp in warm, you know, in the sunlight. Um, and I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem or not. I have not tested that out yet, but further testing will show because it does need to be fairly rigid. On the inside, we have we have uh, spots for mounting the flight controller and the battery and all that stuff. So that does kind of you know need to be stable and you don't want the, the body sort of flexing too much in flight. But uh, I feel like, in, you know, unless it just totally ruins it in that regard, I feel like the trade-off of having a little bit extra flex is way better for having durability. Uh, because look, this thing takes like 14 hours to print, or at least it took me 14 hours to print it. I was using a 0.4 nozzle on my CR10, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. And it took about 14 hours to print, and that's a while, and you really don't wanna be printing something for 14 hours and then take it out and try and fly it and then, well and put even more hours of work into assembling it into an airplane and then taking it out and flying it and then just having something you know having the middle of it just snap in half that would be very saddening so one thing i will have to test out as well is whether or not i can paint this because if i could paint it like white then that might help in terms of uh keeping it cool in the sunshine so uh, and also just putting a custom paint job on it would be cool. So I will have to test out uh, how well it works to to paint it, like spray paint it, and then how well the paint sticks and that sort of thing. So that will be you know some more testing in the future. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that. Another cool thing that I printed is a GoPro mount. This is a print that I got off of Thingiverse. It's a 10 degree GoPro mount for the Squirt uh, Cinewhoop and it's originally designed to be printed in TPU. So it is fairly thick, like it's more hefty than it needs to be to when it's printed in OBC, because OBC is actually a little bit more rigid uh, than TPU. So the cool thing about OBC is that it can be rigid or flexible, or kind of both, um, but not necessarily squishy like TPU. So depending on how you design something, it can be flexible in one axis and then rigid in another, which is nice. But for this uh, camera mount, I think it's actually a little overbuilt because um, it's, just, it's just a little too rigid. There's not enough give to kind of soak up the vibration. And it is just a different kind of material. So it's not, it's not, maybe not as good as soaking up the vibration. I don't know, well, I'll have to try that out. I did do a little bit of flying, but these were on old props, so we had vibration anyway, so it's kind of hard to tell. But anyway, that's something that is very cool and it's very, uh, very durable. I even did a little crash test with this thing, totally on purpose, and it survived just fine. So that may be another option, and personally, I think it's easier to print than TPU anyway. All right, let's talk about printing this stuff. So you do need to treat it a little bit differently than PLA. Uh, more, you need to treat it more like TPU. Now, I'll just tell you right away, the big thing is the brim. You wanna have a nice big brim on this baby, uh, like a big old Mexican hat or something, like at least probably 20 layer lines, maybe 10 layer lines on, one, on the outside and 10 on the inside, if you can do that for your model, depending on how it is. But like pretty much the more layer lines, the better, probably up to 40. I printed the full-size Mini Hawk body up uh, with a 40 layer line brim, which is kind of insane, but it really makes a big difference. Now, the other thing that makes a huge difference is what you print on. Now, I tried printing on straight glass, even though John said, it's not going to work. You don't, you know, you can't print on glass, but I, was, I tried it anyway. It kind of worked. Um, I, I still think it maybe would work under the right conditions, um, but you can actually just print this on 
uh, packing tape. So some polypropylene packing tape. Uh, try saying that three times fast and you can uh, get some good results. And I even printed it on the Ender 3, which has a Bowden tube. And that is also something that they said that you can't print with a Bowden tube. You need a direct drive printer, but it turns out that you actually can print with a Bowden tube, or at least I had, I had good results on the few test prints that I did. For some reason, they came apart at like a few layer lines up. I'm not sure why. I think that has something more to do with my printer and my slicer settings. In any case, the packing tape combination with the Bowden tube does actually work. So that's nice to know. But John was very generous and sent along the CR10 direct drive conversion kit because I said, well, look, I'm, you know, I might, I might just convert my CR10 anyway so I can print this stuff. And they said, I'll hook you up. And so I do appreciate that very much. Uh, and it's a pretty cool kit. So I just, you know, followed the directions and put that in place. So the direct drive kit just gets rid of the Bowden tube and it puts the uh, extruder motor directly above the hot end essentially. So everything's in line, which is nice. Um, and you know, you have to change your settings and stuff. I'm still very glad that they sent that along because I will definitely be trying that out with TPU and some other very flexible materials, like maybe like Ninja Flex or something like that. So thank you for that again. Now, some people say that with packing tape, uh, it like pulls the, the print, like pulls up the packing tape and it ruins it. Well, I found at least for what I printed, it didn't seem to ruin the packing tape at all. I could just reuse the packing tape that's on the bed. Um, however, if you don't want to go the packing tape route, you can also use a product called Magigoo. This is specifically Magigoo 3D printing adhesive for PP, and that stands for polypropylene. And so the idea with this is it's kind of like the glue stick method. It's got like some liquid stuff in here and a uh, foam uh, brush thingy, and you just kind of like brush it on, kind of rub it into the glass or whatever your print surface is, and it works quite well. Seems like this would last quite a while, really. So that is one option as well. 3D Fuel also sent along a layer of layer lock. So it's like a polypropylene sheet and that stuff really works. And I like it because it leaves a nice finish on the bottom of the, uh, of the print. It's a very like a kind of a textured finish, which I just, I sort of like that. And it's nice because then you don't have to worry about reapplying the Magigoo. And if you really need it to stick, you can use the layer lock sheet plus the Magigoo, but I did not need to do that. The either one worked just fine for me. And this thing is on here like solid, man. Very nice. So this thing is pretty doggone on there. And it actually works out pretty well going in this direction because like it is actually on there very well in the length, sort of lengthwise direction. But not as much in this direction. So that is actually a good way to print it, I think. Let's peel this off of here. Now let's cover some printing tips and kind of the settings that I used to print this, which I think turned out pretty well. And again, this I printed all of these things on the uh, CR10 with a 0.4 nozzle, and I was using the Printer Mods Direct Drive Conversion Kit. Now for the nozzle temperature, it, I used 180 degrees Celsius. Uh, for some reason on the actual roll of, of filament, it says you can go as low as 160, but then on the website it says 170, uh, but 180 seemed to work pretty well. I used a 60 degree bed temperature and a wide brim, that's very important. So t anywhere from like 20 to 40 layer lines, uh, kind of depending on your model. For the brim, I did 110% flow, 105% uh, flow for just normal printing and 110% for infill. And I think bumping up the flow on the infill really seemed to help because for a lot of, uh, a lot of the prints, it seemed like the infill was just not connecting and it would just kind of stop short. I used about a 30% fan speed. Um, I do have a modified fan nozzle on the CR10 um, and I did no fan for the, at least the first two layers. So I still kind of need to play around with the fan speed and kind of figure out some differences. But basically I didn't find that I had to use a ton of fan in order to get good prints. Although it probably would have helped in certain situations because there are some spots like on the uh, sort of the inside of these holes 
on the, the top of the holes on the MH5 model uh, where there's some sagging and then you know some sagging in some in a few other areas and I printed very slowly so about 25 millimeters per second all around typically um, and yeah, it just, it takes a long time, but you know what? I'd rather have something that takes a long time, but then it turns out good instead of like have it go fast and then it works like part of the way and then it just falls apart. I have actually had no problems with stringing in all of these models. And I hadn't really even thought about that until it occurred to me that, oh yeah, that's one of the problems that people have with nylon is stringing. And so I have not had any problems with stringing. These have all turned out really good, even on this, this test model uh, that has the four posts, like really no stringing. That The tiniest posts, actually none of the posts really turned out that great. Maybe the medium sized one turned out okay in terms of the sort of the finish of it, but, but there's no stringing, uh, which is pretty great. And in terms of storing, storing this filament, I just put it in like a five gallon bucket with some silica with my other filament that I keep dry. So when it wasn't being printed with, it was in that dry bucket. A few weird things that I found with printing, and it's kind of hard to tell honestly whether this is the filament or whether it's my printing setup having just installed the direct drive uh, extruder or you know my slicer settings, but I did find that some in some areas the uh, the top skin did not look very good. It looked kind of, um, you know, it looked kind of rough, almost like it got pulled up at certain parts. Just not, not super pretty. Also the infill, the infill would not connect in some of these models and it would just kind of get all squiggly. It, it wouldn't be like straight lines. Um, and in some cases I did have some uh, under, it looks like under extrusion towards the, the ending of the layer. So and that's only in certain parts. Not exactly sure why, to be honest with you. So I think that could just be dialing in kind of the flow rate um, since this stuff has a lower density than other filaments. I'm not totally sure. With all of these prints, the walls look great. I mean, except for the spots where there was like under extrusion. So it obviously didn't do what it was supposed to do, but everywhere else, like, it looks so good. In, in a lot of cases, it is very, very hard to find the layer lines. So I really like that. Another thing I printed is a miniaturized version of these little poly, these low poly rose vases, which are super cool. Just very, very neat. I got these off of Thingiverse. And uh, I printed one in black PLA, the Midnight Black 3D Fuel Pro PLA, and then the other one in OBC. And they look pretty much the same. I think the, the OBC looks a little shinier actually, maybe a little bit more of a shinier finish, um, but they behave very differently. So the OBC is like, uh, feels more like a water bottle and it just kind of you know, squishes and flexes. And the PLA is like very, very hard, very rigid. And this is printed in vase mode. So it, uh, it was a good test to kind of see how the walls would look and kind of how, how well they would hold together with just one layer and they held together very nicely. I also printed this little uh, miniature test, this little test print and uh, this guy, it's like a little it's kind of a cube with like an angled section and then it's got this, uh, and then it's got some overhang sections and some posts that it prints and then a kind of a, uh, what would you call this? Like an overhang arch to see how, how uh, what degree that you can print out to without having a ton of sagging. And it looks like this printed out to about 50 or 60 degrees pretty well. Uh, and again, I think that was with about a 30% fan speed, I think. Um, it actually, it's kind of hard to tell because it may have increased it since the layer, uh, the layer uh, time was shorter. And the bridging uh, performed pretty well also, a little bit of sagging. But it's actually, and this is this is what's interesting, is that where the the bridges are, um, you can like press down on them very hard, and they're quite rigid. So like with TPU, it would just get all squishy. But this is actually rather rigid. Uh, but you can actually, you know, you still flex the uh, the parts in different directions, uh, and it's flexible. So that's pretty cool. So the Mini Hawk Five, this is actually right here is a wing for this guy, and you can uh, well you. You can see my video about the Mini Hawk 5, and you'll see more videos about the Mini Hawk 5 as uh, as I 
print the parts and get the parts and put everything together. Um, so it should be pretty cool. But the wing is going to go on here just like this, which I think looks super cool. This is printed in uh, clear Workday PLA from 3D Fuel. I also have the hatches, the or the two halves of the hatch. The hatch is not a perfect fit for the, like the opening of the hatch is not a perfect fit for the hatch, but it's hard to tell whether that's the the PLA hatch or or the opening of the of the body here. So that's that may need some tweaking. But check this out. Oh, doesn't that look awesome? That's gonna look so cool. With the with the if I if I end up doing the clear wings and the oh that's great. But I think I will actually be printing the I'll try printing anyway the wings out of this stuff because this could be really good as long as we can maintain a nice rigid wing because it does need to be rigid. Um, this will be great, especially for the control surfaces because it'll just flex and flex all day long and you won't have to add uh, con uh, con uh, you won't ha you won't have to add hinges to the wing. All right, so bottom line, this is some really cool filament. I think it has some really neat. Uh, uses for specific applications. It's probably not something that you would want to replace PLA with or TPU. It's kind of in between. It's kind of, it's not squishy like TPU, but it's also much more durable than PLA. I think that this would be really good in a an application where you want a lot of durability and uh, weight is at a you know, is a premium. So I think something like quadcopters, airplanes, that type of thing. So I think it's a it's a really cool uh, kind of in between uh, filament. Um, it is a little bit more pricey. It's about thirty five dollars for a half roll. So it's about I think seventy dollars for a full one kilogram roll. I was able to print all of this stuff, and I still have. I don't, probably half of this left over or more. So I should be able to print the entire Mini Hawk 5 with this same roll, no problem. If you are interested in getting some of this stuff and trying it out for yourself, again, you can do it, or at least from the testing that I've done, you can do it with a Bowden tube and just packing tape if you don't want to uh, try and buy anything else or modify anything else with your printer you can give that a shot. But if you want to pick this stuff up, I'll have a link in the description. Thanks again to John at 3D Fuel and Fargo3dprinting.com for making this happen. Thanks everybody, and I will see you again very soon.